on, stand on your feet with me tonight. Come on, can you just lift your hands up just right here, right in the beginning? Come on, we're going to magnify the Lord tonight. God, we just come before you, Holy Spirit. Father God, Jesus, we come to magnify you for who you are. We ask you, Holy Spirit, flood this place with your mighty glory. God, whatever needs to be done tonight in the midst of this congregation, we need you tonight, and we welcome you tonight. Holy Ghost, move in your power. Move in your spirit, oh God. Stir us up tonight, oh Lord. Do what needs to be done in our heart and spirit tonight. Father, we just come before you right now, and we say we are needy tonight. We need your presence. We need your presence. We need your presence. God, we can't make it without you, God. We need you, Lord, more than the air that we breathe. We need your presence, God. Holy Spirit, fill this place with your glory. Fill this place with your glory. God, we want to encounter you tonight, oh, Lord. God, we want to have an encounter with you that will spark things in our spirit, that will change things in us, God. Lord, that will work a work that only you can do, oh, God. We come before you with great expectation, and we say, Holy Spirit of God, have your way in this place. God, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, and all God's people shout it. Come on in, all God's people shout it. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. How many sense the presence of the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, right before we get into the worship, if you're here for um, um, the Medicare thing with Brother Dick Levert, it's in room 101. He wanted to make that announcement. So if you're here for Medicare and that information meeting, it's room 101. You're free to go there. But how many ready to go in the presence of the King tonight? Come on, how many going to press in tonight? I wonder how many have an agenda tonight. I'm going to get with my King tonight. I'm going to get in his presence tonight. I'm going to behold him in his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord's calling us deeper tonight, deeper in the river. We don't want to just tap our toe in. Amen. We want to swim in the deep waters of the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, Father, we long for you. Let's hear that kick drum. Come on and clap with him.
than we're to go with him. Even if, if it's different. And God, the Bible says that God's ways are higher than ours. God's ways are better than ours. They're deeper than ours. And so we're going to be obedient to him tonight and do what he says. So if he goes to the left, if he goes to the left, then we go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we go to the right. We're going to jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we go to the left. If he goes to the right, we go to the right. We're going to dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance.
just wants you to say what's in your spirit. You realize that your spirit connects with God's spirit. The Bible says that the spirit searches the deep things of God. And the Bible says that Jesus had to go away so the comforter would come and he would reveal to us what Jesus said to the disciples, what Jesus said in the word. The Holy Spirit would come and he would reveal it to us. So that means there's a connection. We can hear what's current, what he's saying right now today. You can also say what's in your spirit. Your spirit, if you've been feeding your spirit, the word of God, in your spirit is abundance. And there's abundance for melody lines and rhythms and rhymes. There's abundance of words for the Father. There's abundance of love. There's abundance of affection. There's abundance of knowledge. There's abundance of wisdom. There's no ending because you tapped into the Spirit. And there is no ending. If you're wondering why you're weak in some areas, because you're operating in the flesh. Here's an example. I have tried to write songs. I probably only wrote about 20 in my entire life. And I struggled writing songs. And in the middle of prophetic worship, just like this, songs begin to come. I just would hear them. But it was always when I was connected to what he was doing. I was always very intent on connecting to him. When I would connect with him, all of a sudden, words and melody lines out of the blue. I could sit in a room for 10 hours and try to get one melody line and nothing would come. I could be in the middle of the presence of God and the Lord has downloaded to me probably 10 songs, maybe not fully finished, but at least melody lines and rhythms and lyrics. And I do believe the more we tap into the Holy Spirit, the more prophetic words, the more words of knowledge for you when you go out and minister to people and you're in the grocery store, and you're in your car and you're talking to somebody and you want to minister to him, you don't want know what to say. You ask the Holy Spirit, however much you're, you're connecting with him and the much as you're reading the word, if you're connected, there is a river of life and it's deep, it is not shallow. Your mind is shallow. The depth of God is incredible. This song we're singing right now was written in the middle of a worship service. I could have tried that song for 10 years and still never gotten it, but the Lord downloaded it to me in His, in his spirit. There's supernatural things that we can connect into. I don't know about you, but I don't like the natural. I like the supernatural. I want to have strength from God. I want to be strong in God where I am weak. And it might not be a song for you. It might be a personality thing. You might not have leadership and you're lacking direction, but the Holy Spirit inside of you is bold. The Holy Spirit inside of you has leadership and you can take on that personality of God. You can take on the strength of God wherever you're weak. You can just pick up what he has. And Pastor Joe. Hallelujah. Come on, how many received that word? Amen. What you saw you do this, lay your hand on your, your belly, okay? Father God, Holy Spirit, we ask you to stir up our spirit, man. Father, I declare words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the gift of prophecy. God, I pray right now, Father, that in our spirit, which is the communication channel to our soul, God, by our spirit right now, I pray you download revelations download direction download words of wisdom words of knowledge prophetic words yes. not only for your people that are here in this congregation tonight but God for those that we're going to come in contact with God we want to be a channel from heaven to earth God we ask you right now God that every gift in us yes. as believers we know we have the Holy Ghost and we've been filled with the Spirit we have the Holy Ghost residing on the inside of us, so every gift is in us. And right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that those gifts be activated. Come on, pray this out loud. Say, Holy Ghost, activate every gift of the Spirit. I will yield my soul to my spirit man. I will give expression to what you're saying through me. I make myself available to be an instrument used by you in Jesus' name. 
Come on, how many receive that tonight? There, there's nothing like a now word. You know what a now word is? It's a word that relates to you right where you're at. Now, I thank God, I believe you're going to get a word through, through the preacher tonight. I believe you've already, many of us have already received a word from God. God speaks through different venues and speaks through different ways. But it's always going to come by your spirit. You ever heard something in your spirit just leap? If I can use that terminology. Something on the inside quickened and you knew that that was a word for you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking something. And you know what? God wants us to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Let me believe that's true. You know, everything about God is giving. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus ascended, seated on the right hand of the Father, and gave us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us the gifts of the Spirit. The very nature of God is giving. But in that giving, He's put things in us, not just for us but so they can operate through us. Because the greatest blessing you and I ever receive, I believe on this side of heaven, is for God in some way to use us as these mere vessels to speak a word from heaven to somebody else and see that word revolutionize a person's life or see that word bring order or bring clarity or bring direction. Primarily bring someone to Jesus. I believe that's the foremost calling. Amen. Go ahead and touch your neighbor and tell him, you know, God wants to use you. Go ahead and tell him, now you got the goods. Go ahead and tell him, you got it. You got the goods. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. So we got a lot of things going on, got meetings over on the side, and of course our youth and children doing their thing, but we're glad you're here tonight. Guys, if you could give us a little bit more light in here if you don't mind, thank you. But uh, we're, we're thrilled that you're here in the house of the Lord. Appreciate Pastor PJ. How much, how many appreciate the depth of the Spirit in this young man, amen? He has a depth in the Holy Ghost, and I'm so proud of him. He's one of our spiritual sons. We, we've seen him raised up, and not only uh, in the house of the Lord, speaking of the spiritual house, but uh, he's almost been raised up in our house, amen, and uh, kind of with, one of, with uh, our sons and kind of raised up there. I can remember the season when he walked with God and when he struggled. And, you know, a lot of times our kids have to wrestle through that season of getting their own identity in God. Well, come on, somebody. And, and, and parents, you got to be real careful in that season because it's easy for us because we know uh, the realities of walking in the fullness of the purposes of God and the things of the kingdom. But we have to be very, very careful that we got a hum going on. Y'all hear that hum? Mmm. It sounded like that. Mmm. <laughs> y'all got it. Can we give our sound men a big hand? You guys are awesome. Appreciate y'all. Um. But, you know, you've got to be careful, parents, because sometimes when they're transitioning from being a child into adulthood, you know how it is in the Jewish community, at 13, they become a woman or a man. And primarily for the guys, they do the bar mitzvah, which signifies the parents recognizing that he's changed. They don't believe in teenage years. They just believe you're either a child, and at 13, you become an adult. But during those transitional years, sometimes it's difficult as parents to navigate. I don't know why I'm saying this. Maybe nobody needs it, and... You can get the tape and give it to somebody later on. But um, uh, I really believe during that season, you've got to back off sometimes and allow them to get their own identity and process their own walk with God. Because how many realize they can't walk in your step? Come on, parents. They can't walk in your steps. they got to find their own identity. they got to find, watch this, their own assignment. You know, it's easy for us as parents to say, well, I believe you should be this or she's to be that. But the reality is, they're, they were God's child before they ever became our child. And usually we have a process, I mean, an opportunity to steward them for a small period of time, usually about 18 years. I know for all three of my kids, 18 was the magic year for them. At 18, they checked out. <laughs> and uh, hallelujah, it was good. It's, me and Mama got an empty nest now. It's good, ain't it, Mama? We got grandbabies that come over. Hallelujah. Amen. But anyway, hold on. Anybody receive anything from that? Amen. Come on up, PJ. 
Hallelujah. That's a good word. Amen. Amen. I just, just real quick to tag on to that as a son, what pastor is saying, you know, as, as, as a young man, I think everybody's been at a point where you have to just recognize that God is real. And that was the season where God became real to me. Amen. I knew my mama loved God. I mean, he was very real to her, but he wasn't real to me. And so that season that I walked through, you know, by the grace of God, uh, caused me to realize that he's a very real, tangible God. Amen. Amen. We'd like to welcome our guests this evening. Come on, Encounter. Put your hands together for our guests that Maeve came out this night. Gosh, we're so honored, so honored, so privileged to have you here with us. We don't want to embarrass anybody, but if you would, uh, just kind of take a peek. On the back of your seat, you'll see a card right in a little pocket. That card has guests on one side and has response on the other. Um, if you're interested in kind of getting a feel for the house, getting connected with us, we would love to have you. And then bring those cards um, with everybody. What we do is we'll have our ties and offer here in just a moment. And the ushers will come up and have baskets up here. And you just bring those up, drop them off in there, and uh, we'd love to just bless you. Be a blessing and, and uh, get in touch with you guys and just be there for you. Amen. How many know that you need relationship in the kingdom? Amen. Relationship is a kingdom principle. It's a godly principle because even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit operate by relationship. Amen. So we would love to get connected with you. Amen. Give them a hand of applause again, Encounter. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Amen. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and read our scriptures this evening coming out of Proverbs uh, right before we go into our tithes and offering. Amen. The word says, there is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Amen. Amen. Let me break that down to layman's terms. The word is true for one, okay? So it's saying for those that want to hang on to everything in life, not just money, just they just want to be clingy. They want to be greedy with all the things that they have. It doesn't matter because in the end, you end up losing it all anyway. But to those that give and that are generous, amen, even as the Father has given so much unto us, those who give find themselves being blessed. And the Word of God says it like this, that they'll still be watered. Those that water will be watered themselves, amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed, amen. I want to walk around and say, I've got favor because I know who my daddy is, amen. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, amen. Ain't nobody want to be walking around broken, disgusted, amen. Because that's not, that's, not, that's not appealing to anybody. Who wants to join the kingdom of God when everybody's broke, amen. So I encourage you guys to give and be blessed. We don't do this for us. It's not for any, anybody's staff or any, any salaries in the church. Listen, we're trying to increase the kingdom of heaven. We're trying to gain souls for the glory of God, amen. And that's what it's about, amen. That's what it's about. It's about reaching a lost world, amen. So just stand up with your tithe and offering this evening, amen. And we're going to pray right, right after we read our confession, amen. Go ahead and put that up, guys. As we sow today's offering, we believe the Lord for salvation in our families and our community, deliverance and healing in our soul and body, and revival in the land. Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, hold your ties up this evening. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, 
And we say thank you for this opportunity to bless you, Father God. I pray, Holy Ghost, that everything that comes in would be multiplied a hundredfold, Father God. I thank you, God, that we give, Father God, because you gave first, Father. We give, Father God, so that people might come to know the name of Jesus, the name that's exalted above every other name, Father God, the name that means healing and hope and restoration and joy and peace and love and everything else, Father God, that Christ is. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that that's the reason we give this evening, Father God, so that lives can be impacted for your glory and for your name's sake. Holy Ghost, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How y'all doing this evening? Let me try that one more time. How y'all doing this evening? All right. Touch your neighbor and say, let your face know. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Ah. Now, how many really feel blessed because of who Jesus is and your relationship with him? Amen. We are blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Just a few things I want to make mention of. Of course, uh, Friday night's our outreach. Uh, downtown will be the only entity one other church is helping us a little bit doing some things but uh, we'll be setting up downtown and God's really blessed us with a lot of stuff to be able to give away we still need some candy so if you can bring some bags of candy uh, it's our trunk or treat and uh, if you'd like to volunteer you know help anything from greeting to helping us set up or whatever you can call the office and have the pastor Larry get with you on that and uh, we just believe in God to touch a lot of people amen downtown Gaffney, so it's an opportunity to reach out in our fall fun festival so I encourage you to uh, be a part of that um, also wanted to um, make mention you know uh, our fire conference Eddie James is coming amen it's going to be awesome always is when when brother Eddie gets with us but he'll be here and uh, we learned today he's going to have over 50 people in his team coming with him so it's full dance team full band all of that sort of thing so it's going to be awesome in November and Get the word out. You know, put it on Facebook, post it, repost it, repost it, repost it, because I believe there's going to be an atmosphere for people to receive a miracle, be touched by God. But, uh, amen, it's going to be a great time in the presence of the Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We are, we're so blessed with the staff we have and you know, the ministry we have. And many of you, of course, uh, uh, know Pastor Ronnie. And uh, he and I have been in a relationship, I don't know, 12, well over 20 years, I think. Ministry and ministering in different churches and whatnot, and he being a pastor. And recently, a couple of years ago, felt released from the Lord to turn his church over and came here to start attending. And then uh, God opened up some things for him, and he became part of our staff and been a great addition to our staff. And does a lot of care ministry stuff, follow up stuff, as well as putting up our greeter and ushers and, and uh, some of those risk management, different, different areas of ministry in that regard. But, thing I love about this brother, he's a friend, but he has a powerful word, a deep word in him, amen, and uh, he's going to bring a word to you tonight, how many are ready to receive the word, Pastor Ronnie asked, come on, put your get hands together for this man of God, amen. Oh, come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time, come on, give him some praise, he's worthy, I said he is worthy. Uh, it is always an honor. I never 
take it lightly, sharing the Word of God, and uh, we here in the house of God, it's our church home now, but we are always honored and uh, just so blessed that God has allowed us the privilege to be here, to be part, and uh, to link up with such great people, great leadership, great pastors, and we, we love them and love you guys, and uh, I, I want to get right on in to the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 6. I want to share some familiar scripture tonight. Matthew 6. Pastor had uh, mentioned probably two or three weeks ago uh, taking the service tonight and uh, I'd forgotten about it. I'd forgotten to jot it down. And so he uh, called me, I think, Monday evening and a reminder, and I had I had forgotten, and uh, so I'm thinking, uh, okay, Lord, what is it? What is it? You know, and I've got tons of notes and tons of outlines, and uh, I'm I'm looking over my stuff, and nothing's working, and nothing's working. And I go to bed last night, and somewhere in the in the middle of the night, I don't know when. I just I just know I I, I awakened at some point with the thought that I'm going to share with you, and then when I woke up again this morning. It was still burning in me. In Matthew 6, verse 9, and uh, uh, let's just stand for, I'm going to read one verse. I'm going to read verse 9, um, but uh, I'll share more than that. But I'm going to read one verse just to get it kicked off. Matthew 6, 9, I've got the King James, whatever you've got is, is good. And the, uh, that's the new King James, James Version put up. That's pretty close to what I've got. Uh, here we go, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Bow your heads and pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would take these thoughts that I'm going to share tonight. I thank you for this privilege to share the Word of God. I pray that, Lord, it would inspire us, it would be touched tonight, that would be moved tonight by the presence, by the power of by the tangible touch of heaven, we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen one more time. You can be seated. I want to I talk to you tonight on the thought, and I really just want to teach. I'm, I'm not going to try to preach this. I just want to do a little basic teaching tonight on what's commonly called the Lord's Prayer, but it could be more accurately called uh, the Believer's Prayer. Jesus didn't pray this prayer uh, in a sense just uh, for us to memorize some Bible verses and to say, well, I've given this to you, but it's a model prayer. If you will, it's an outline prayer. Uh, Luke tells us in Luke's account of this, uh, what's called the Lord's Prayer, Luke gives us this account that the disciples had watched Jesus pray. And... Um, they, when he had finished praying that one of them said to him, it doesn't tell us which one, but one of the disciples had said, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and, and I think about it, and I think of all the things that they saw Jesus do. Come on, they saw him open up the blinded eyes, unstop the deaf ears, make the lame to walk, the dead to raise. They saw him multiply the loaves and the fish and feed the hungry multitude. They saw him by his words speak a word and legion of Gadara, the demons, flee. They saw the miracles of this man and yet when they asked him to teach them, it wasn't how to perform miracles, but they said, Lord, teach us. Come on, somebody ought to help me out. They said, teach us to pray. There was something they, they must have realized because they saw him do all of these things. And I believe somehow they realized because he would get up. The Bible said he would go out early before they got up, before the chickens and the hens and the roosters got up. He got up early and prayed before the breaking of day. And then he went out and healed the sick and raised the dead and cast out devils. Is anybody in here? And then he came back 
and he'd retreat and pray again. And so they said, Lord, teach us to pray. I want to pray the kind of prayers that he prayed, don't you? I would like to pray with that kind of unction, wouldn't you? I would like to see those kind of results in my prayer life. And so Jesus is teaching here. He said here in Matthew 6 and 9, and it, it's, it really could and should be and has been by many uh, a series, and I'm sure pastors probably done it in series before, and we don't have time to develop it tonight, so we're just going to hit it running. But it's an outline. It's a model, if you will. It's a note. You can write the notes out. It's right there in your Bible. It's an outline, a pattern of prayer. I find that Jesus, I'm going to say this before I get started with it. Jesus prayed himself pure. Huh? He prayed himself pure. He prayed himself in right relationship with the Father. He prayed himself in the will of God. Or secondly, he prayed purpose, divine purpose. And then he prayed in the power. I want that. How about you? You're missing a good place to say amen. So Jesus says here in Matthew 6 and 9, after this manner, after this kind, this is the kind of prayer. I want you to pray. You're asking me to teach you how to pray. Then prayer should start out with, he starts out, our Father. And prayer should be, uh, should be initialized, if you will, on the, uh, uh, on the fact that you have a relationship with the Father. How many of you know he's a good Father? He's a good Daddy God. Some have a, a distorted image of the Father. Some, some have a weak view of the Father, but your Heavenly Father is a good Father. He's a faithful Father. He's a loving Father. Come on. He, he's a kind and a gentle Father. He's a Father that's standing with hands stretched out to touch you and to bless you. And, and when, when he said, pray our Father, he said, let your relationship be right. Come on, let your relationship be right. God don't have no stepchildren. You know what God would call a stepchild? A child. Hello, my child. Hello, son. Hello, daughter. Whoa, come on, church. And so when you when you begin praying, just, Father, Father, just, just you know, you, you just ought to be able to crawl up in Daddy's lap. You just ought to be able to just say, Father, I just, I just embrace your love. Lord, I need your love. Lord, I need you to watch out over me. I need your care. Is anybody here? And so he said, Father, which art in heaven, God is on the throne. God has always been on the throne. He is highly exalted. How many of you know he still is? God hasn't abdicated the throne. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of folks don't know what's right and wrong, don't know who's in control, and folks are wondering about this thing and that thing, but I've got good news. God is still God. I said he's still God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so he starts out acknowledging Jesus is teaching us, if you will, a pattern of prayer, a model of prayer, relationship with the Father. The second is worship, is praise. Oh, God, you're holy. Oh, God, you're mighty. Hallowed be your name. Come on. And you just take yourself into the presence of the throne room of God. I said, you just take your, you just pray yourself right into the presence. Right in the presence of the throne room of God. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There's something about his name. I said, there's something about his name. The name is linked to identity, to nature. Come on. He, in the Bible, there's, in the Old Testament, there were names that were attributes of the presence of God that were descriptive, if you will, of who he is in our life. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. Come on. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. Does anybody know him as king? He's the way, the truth, the life. He's more than enough. He revealed himself to Israel. 
in so many dim dimensions. He's our peace. Jehovah Shalom. When, when, when all hell is raging, when, when war and strife and confusion is raging, you can get a, Lord, you are Jehovah Shalom. And so in prayer, sometimes y'all ain't helping me. I'll help myself. Sometimes in prayer, I just got to kick in a little peace. God, I need some peace. Hallowed be your name. Your name is jo Jehovah Shalom. Mm, you are my peace. So whatever his, whatever your needs are as you pray and you acknowledge the attributes of his name. And so this is what Jesus is teaching. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, uh, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then watch this. Kingdom of God come, will of God be done in earth. Some people make the kingdom of God so spooky. Spooky folk don't know what the kingdom is. It's not spooky. It's not something that's so mystic that nobody can understand it. Huh? The kingdom of God is a present reality. The kingdom of God is right here. Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. When he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, he meant what he said. He said what he meant. Establish the kingdom of God in your life. You say, the devil's messing with me. You, you pray the kingdom of God in. You pray the purpose of God in. You declare the rule of the kingdom exists. Huh? You declare the rule of the king exists over your, over your life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this earth, in my life, in this place. Then we have no right. You have no authority. You can't touch this. And so he said, pray this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, right here. Establish it right here. What you establish here will be established there. It's already established there. And you come into agreement. And Jesus said, this is the kind of prayer you pray. And somebody said, well, that won't work. Well, you keep on playing them little doubt and pouting prayers you're praying. See what that gets you. It's going to get you what you've always got. Huh? That's the reason you give up in 15 seconds. That's the reason you get mad at everybody. They didn't treat me right. You'll never establish the kingdom till you get a hold of the word of God and the will of God and the mind of God and you say, in the name of Jesus, devil, you cannot have me. I'm a child of the most high. Somebody say, don't you know what you're going through? You've got to understand that I'm not identified by what I'm going through. I'm identified by his word, by who he says I am. What I'm going through is just temporary. But his word is so. Ha! Huh. You, you may not be looking at me in my wild time, but it's coming. It come in a double portion. Huh? And so you got to pray this stuff. You can sit and argue with reason and argue with logic, but Jesus is teaching us how to pray. Pray the power in. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, and watch this, we're just taking it one by one by one. And then verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. That's daily provision. I'm, I'm running out of time, but watch this. That's your daily need. How many of you know God doesn't, God doesn't get offended when you ask to be taking care of your daily need, of your provision? God, I just, God, I, 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 I need this in my life. God is not somehow saying, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Give us our daily bread. How many of you believe he's got enough bread? Huh? What's the Bible say? The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. I want to say the, key, the hills they're on belong to him. God's got enough. God's got more than enough. He is, he is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Watch this. Give us this day our daily bread. Now I want you to get to this. I, I want to get to this because it's so important when we're talking about 
this is really a kingdom prayer. This is this this is prayer to get us walking in kingdom realm and kingdom reality. Come on, this this is this is the the dynamics of walking in the authority in the realm of God, and and you pray this stuff in. It doesn't just happen because you got up in the morning and the devil said, "Oh, look, there's a child of God. He gonna try to take away from you the the word of God." The presence of God and everything. Huh? And if you don't learn to God, y'all, y'all missed a good place to say amen. Huh? Now, now here's something else. Because these, these are like keys. These are like steps. And they're all important. And if you, if you miss it in one, sometimes, you know, it's like, a, it's like a, 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 an automobile. My brothers, my dad, I've been around automobiles all my life. But, but you know, sometimes it's just something so minor, especially nowadays with these computers, how everything's programmed. Sometimes it's just a sensor. What's a sensor? What in the world is a sensor? A sensor is malfunctioning, causing your car to act up. Uh, but, 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 if, but if you don't have everything, are you listening to me? And so Jesus hits another point. And this point's a big point. This point's so big that out of all the points that he shared, it's the only one that he came back to and repeated. Hello. I said, hello. Watch this. Verse 12. And forgive us our debts. I'm going to get even with them. You wait, I'll catch them sometime. Y'all look at me strange. Come on, I'm talking to church folk. Huh? You know I'm telling the truth because there's some folk, they church folk that's done it to you. Come on, they find that have done it to you. Don't you act so religious up in here. But Jesus said, that if you don't forgive, you plot the well. You plot the blow. You say, but they wronged me. He didn't say, well, you get the list and I'll look at the list as if it's all right for you to hold it against me. He didn't say that. He said, you forgive this thing. He said, you need to be free from the blockage. And the only way you can be free is just release the stuff. Because that stuff will be a poison in you. Your ex doesn't mess you up, so what? They doesn't mess two or three up along the way. Get over it. Move on. I mean, some people, unless God changes them, <laughs> that's the way they are. Huh? But you can't walk around with bitterness the rest of your life. Because they'll be sitting over there just, uh, you know, just grinning like, a, like an old possum. And you'll, be, you'll just be a bitter old soul. Just a dried up old prune. Huh? And them have it all the fun. You gotta release the stuff. And Jesus said, forgive us our debts as we forgive those that I, and let me just go ahead and and, and cut to it. Uh, and there, there's another there's another thought. But just while I'm on this point, let me go ahead and cut to it. Watch this. Verse 13, something else. We're going to come back to that. But verse 14, he comes right back to the forgiveness thing. All the points that he had about prayer, about praying yourself in. This is the only point that he came back to. Sometimes in the church, we got it down good. We could really, I mean, we're having revival. We're having a flow. They got the keyboard cranked and the drums are beating and the double licking and the bass is a bucking and, and, the, and the strings are, you know, and, and the singers have got I me. Mean, they, they got it. Put, I mean, uh, American Idol, we got it right here. Uh, and, and sometimes the preaching, have you heard? He's calling fire down from heaven. But sometimes there's something in the way and we be the something because we got our attitudes. And look what they did to me five years ago. I'm going to sit here and pout.
because they did something to me five years ago. I don't remember what it was, but it was, I just remember it was something. <laughs> I never forgot what it was about, but I'm still mad because they never asked me to forgive them. The only point that Jesus came back to, we're talking about praying. He's talking about praying. The only point that he came back to is this one called prayer, this one of unforgiveness, verse 14. For if you give men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. <sighs> forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness, forgiveness. Verse 13, we skipped it. It's the last point of this, and then I'm going to wrap this up. He said, lead us not into temptation. You've got to pray yourself pure. Ephesians 6, the wiles of the devil, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Psalms 91, all the things that war against the flesh. The devil's going to throw everything in the world your way. Huh? The devil's going to exploit your weaknesses to see if he can get you back. Can he steal your thunder? He's going to do it. The only thing that's going to keep you, keep you solid is keep your prayer life pure. He's going to call some lady. Come on, because men are visual. Can, I, can we get real? He's going to call some lady to sit in church. I'm not looking, so if you are, I don't know. And they're not going to be dressed proper. If I need to explain that, you might not be. Uh, and men are visual. And some men are going to have a hard time. And he won't act on it in church, but he'll go home at night. Somebody get real with me. I'm just telling you that we got a war against strongholds, whatever it might be, in the name of Jesus. This is a sly fight. He's a sly devil. He's a sly devil. So when you're praying, Father God, help me. Lord, I renew my mind in the Word of God. I pull down strongholds. I, 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 I cast aside thoughts, principalities, and powers, deceits of the mind. So you got to you got to pray yourself and praise yourself in kingdom realm. Deliver us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. And watch this, verse 13. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's, it's important to notice that right there in verse 13, this what, what just a few verses here of this prayer, that he literally starts it out with praise. And he ends it up with praise. He starts it out. My Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. And then he ends it with praise. No wonder when he went out, he shook kingdoms. Devils flee. The dead were raised. They said, pray, teach us to pray. And he taught them. And it's right here in the Bible simple principles that if we'll learn to govern our lives and discipline our lives make it a pattern of prayer we'll walk in victory stay wow what a word come on how many know that's a true word you know young guy Cho years ago which he pretty significant in the sense of the ministry that he oversees I suppose now he's still pastors the largest church in the world in so Korea, but he made this statement. He said the American church, and he was relating to you and I, the American church will do everything for revival. They'll send missionaries, they'll give money, they'll have programs, they'll do classes. He said they'll do all of these things, but the most needful thing, pray. Over in so Korea, Young Ga Cho has a Actually, it's a mountain that they, they bought. The church owns, as I understand, and caves all up in that mountain. And 
to see him come in that valley early in the morning. You can hear people up in those caves, and some of them going there for days, weeks on end, fasting and praying. The American church has become commercialized and materialized. And we've got all the conveniences. We got the pretty lights. We got the everything. We got all the conveniences. You know, when you look at the seven churches that's addressed in the book of Revelations, the church of Laodicea, that was lukewarm. Thought, if I remember correctly, they thought that they were the one that were rich. He said, You think you're rich, but you're really poor. You think you're clothed, but you're really naked. The thing the American church, in general, the American church is lacking is prayer. What's going to change our nation is prayer. In 2 Chronicles 7 14, it's prayer, it's intercession. You know the thing that hell will fight you more on is prayer. That's such a powerful word, Pastor Ronnie. I tell you, it disturbed me. Such a powerful word. And I want, to, I want to encourage you tonight to be honest before the Lord and examine our prayer life tonight. I'll be the first to say, I need to have more discipline in my prayer life. I'm the pastor. Maybe all the rest of y'all got it together. But I need more discipline. I pray every day, yeah. I pray in the Holy Ghost a whole lot. But I can use more discipline in setting aside periods of time pray. I think when we examine our lives, do we have a stronger prayer life now than we've ever had? It's a good question to ask. Is our prayer life richer now than it ever has been before? Wow, what an awesome thought. Out of all the things the disciples could ask, Jesus teaches how to pray. Well, there was something about it when Jesus prayed, wasn't there? That influenced those guys and touched those guys to say, I want that. You know, I believe it was. I believe it was an understanding that out of that prayer time, everything else flowed out of that. All the ministry, all the signs and wonders, all of that. I believe they witnessed the times that Jesus would go away and pray and what would happen right after. And I believe they witnessed that. And I want to challenge you tonight to be honest before the Lord. Because you know what I believe? I believe our children, our grandchildren, those spiritually, naturally that are attached to us. The greatest thing we can do is pray for them. The greatest thing we can do is stand in the gap for them and intercede for them and cover them. There was somebody, I, 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 my, my mind serves me right. I think it was the Wesleyan brothers that their mother decided for their birthday, all of their children for their birthday, what she would do is fast and pray all day long for them. Wow, what a birthday present. What, do, what, what, we, what we do is we get a we get another game, we get another toy, we get a something material. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. But I'm saying it's very easy in our materialistic culture. And I believe God wants to bless us. I believe God wants to prosper us for the kingdom. Let me say that again. For the kingdom. But I believe our primary thing should be God use me to advance the kingdom. And it's going to come through us praying. What's going to help you with your marriage is going to be your prayer life. What's going to help you in your relationships with your kids, people around you, it's going to be your prayer life. What's going to help you keep your flesh under control? Ooh, that was a good play. Help me there, Bishop. What's going to help us keep our flesh under control is our prayer life. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You can tell when you've spent time with God just on how your attitude is that particular day. And I know we all glow in the dark and everything when we sleep and demons flee when we wake up in the morning. But the truth is, if we're not in the Spirit, we're not going to reflect Christ. And one of the ways that we get in the Spirit, one of the primary ways, is in our prayer life. And listen, it's not a religious drudgery. Listen, prayer is supposed to be one of those precious things. Because I'm telling you, and y'all know what I'm talking about. There's times when you press in, I mean, there's the outer court, the inner court, and the holy place. And I believe sometimes when we're praying, it's that outer court, and we're pressing in, and our flesh don't want to get up, or our flesh don't want to pray, and, and we just got to press through that outer court, and then we get in that holy place, and things start illuminating, you know, the menorah's in there, and then we get into that final holy of holies where the glory of God is, where He illuminates the place, and He's speaking back to us. I believe that's a picture of the systematic process that oftentimes happens in prayer. But the thing about it, we want it in five minutes. 
Well, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. We want, it in, we want to get from the outer court to the holy of holies and hear from heaven in five minutes. And God, if it's 506, I'm sorry, I got to go. Oh, y'all ain't, nope, I'm going to have to amen myself. I know it's Wednesday night. But let me know what I'm talking about. But you know what I believe the Holy Spirit's saying to us? He misses his time with us. It's really all about love. It's not always about petitioning and interceding. It's our spiritual warfare. Those are definitely parts of prayer and, and expressions of prayer. But I believe some of the greatest times of prayer is that intimacy. Just, I'm just loving on him. Just like Jesus' teaching there that Ronnie shared, Pastor Ronnie shared, that the beginning of its worship and the end of its worship. It's all about just loving on him. You know, you can declare things when you hear heaven saying it. When I get a word from God on a particular situation, see, that's all I need. All I got to do is resound what heaven has said. All I got to do is sync up and line up with what I've heard the Spirit of God say in that time of prayer, and I know what to declare over a situation or a circumstance. See, sometimes we use scriptures, and they may not be the particular word for that particular battle. Oh, help me here. I got one more minute. There are many different means with which God brought victory to Israel. It wasn't always the same way. Sometimes it was through when you hear the sound in the mulberry trees. This is what you do. Sometimes just walk around the walls of Jericho seven times on the seventh day, and they're going to fall. There was a different strategy of warfare throughout the Scriptures. God didn't always bring victory the same way. Why? Because he wanted us to understand that it's not by a formula you get victory. It's out of a relationship. That's a good place to say amen. It's out of our relationship with him that we're going to walk in the victory that he's made available for us to walk in. And it's out of hearing him for what he is saying, not just in what he has said. But I believe he's saying that. I want to resound what I said earlier, repeat what I said earlier. I believe I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I miss a time with you. Bow your head. Father God, I believe you're convicting hearts all over this building. God, the word was so powerful. God, oftentimes, God, we're, even though there's much revelation that, we're looking for all the deep things that we've never heard before. God, you illuminated the word tonight to us. But oftentimes we're looking for something to tickle our ear rather than the simplicity of the Word of God that brings us back to the foundational principles. The things that got us where we are right now, Father, in the kingdom that we've allowed to slip, Father, where we've allowed our culture, where we've allowed our busyness to crowd out our time where we've neglected to prioritize our time in your word, our time in your presence. Father God, we just repent right now in the name of Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father God, forgive me for not setting aside and disciplining myself with time to meet with you. Help me, Holy Spirit, to reorganize my itinerary that you become the priority that you need to be forgive me father for my prayerlessness i repent of that holy spirit i yield myself to you you're to magnify jesus through my being through my prayer life i make a fresh commitment tonight to lock in time that nothing can rob that time or that slot to meet with you in Jesus name amen can we give God a praise come on somebody hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus wow what an awesome word Pastor Ronnie wow I mean we're touched by that word tonight Wow. Hallelujah.
tell you, God's doing a lot of things, you know, in, a, in nations. I want y'all to do something. We've talked about prayer tonight, and I'm going to release you. I know we're just a few minutes over. But I want you to be specifically praying. Of course, we we'll continue to remember Hannah, my daughter, that's a missionary in El Salvador. Continue to keep her covered. God's doing great things there. The Lord's just opening up more churches. She's ministering in and stuff. But keep her covered, if you will, in the Lord. It was her birthday. I don't know that she had, what, five different birthday parties? How many? Bless God, I think I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to El Salvador for my birthday next year. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You guys, by the way, did an awesome job. Appreciate the cards and gifts that just so touched our hearts and those that shared different things. It was just very, very special to us. We love you. Thank you. We were overwhelmed uh, with our anniversary and, and my birthday as well. Keep Hannah before the Lord. But the thing I want you to uh, continue to cover, and I mentioned it a few times, but uh, there's several of us here. Bernard will be going with me, and I have two other pastors be going with me. Uh, and we'll be going to Cuba to plan a Bible school. And this is kind of new ground for us in Cuba. we got our first trip there. And we'll be ministering to different churches. I think they're going to have some crusades, different things lined up. But I ask you just keep us covered in that. It'll be the first week of December that we'll be embarking, you know, leave out and do that. So in your prayer time, remember, cover us, okay? Spend that time in the presence and, you know, ministering unto the Lord. But lift up pastor and Pastor Chris Miles will be going with me. Pastor Kiki Tant from Anderson will be going. And uh, Brother Bernard will be going. So keep us before the Lord in that. We're believing God as we plant that Bible school with Pastor Saul in Cuba. That God's going to raise up many pastors to plant many more churches throughout Cuba. How many agree with us? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you for the word that was so rich. God, just it's an awesome word. Lord, just, Lord that word ministered to me, Father. God, I thank you for your word, God, that was released, God, in the lives of your people. And I thank you, Father God, we declare, James 1 and 22, that we're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers. And, Lord, when we prayed a prayer and committed that as we prayed it tonight, Father, in our prayer time, concerning our prayer time, I thank you, Holy Spirit, we're going to follow through with that. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for those that, that, that feel like that time is in the morning. I thank you, Holy Ghost, they're not even going to need an alarm clock. I thank you, Holy Ghost, you're going to wake them up, God. And, Lord, that's going to be a sign, Father God, that you're calling them into that prayer closet to meet with you. We thank you, Father, for all you're doing, all you have done, all you're going to continue to do. And we just pray right now over the Fall Fun Festival, God, we declare lives are going to be touched there right downtown Gaffney, Father. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that's going to go forth as we minister to those children and those folks that will be coming through. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise in Jesus' name and all God's people say it. Amen. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. Amen.